Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher, and you're watching The Privacy Guides. A few episodes back, we used the terminal for the first time. That was in the episode on how to use Firefox profiles to create a very strict instance of Firefox for your personal stuff, and to be able to run another Firefox instance side by side that isn't as strict so that it doesn't break websites or so you can compartmentalize things such as work or Google or anything else. This trick was also very helpful if you're a developer and you wanna run a vanilla Firefox instance beside your very strict one. Now, the thing you need to remember from everything I just said is this was the first time we started using the terminal to run commands and that's how the more advanced stuff on Mac OS is done. I'm glad we broke the ice because today we're gonna to be using the terminal a lot more. Um, now, today's episode is about spoofing your Mac address and your computer name and why in the world you should care about doing that. So you may be asking, son, what does spoof mean in the first place? And that's a great question. Spoofing means faking something. So say your real name is, you know, John Doe, and when you subscribe to a website or you register to a website, I should have said, geez, well, you could call yourself Cindy. So you're now spoofing your name. Now, why does this apply to privacy in the context of Mac addresses? Well, the Mac address is the hardware uh, identifier assigned to network interfaces, network cards. So your Mac computer has a few different chips that deal with networking. One of them is the wireless chip and the other, if you have one, is the ethernet chip. That means that when your computer connects to a wireless network, say you go at Starbucks, well, what's happening really is that interface, that chip, the Wi-Fi chip, is connecting to the access point, the wireless router at Starbucks, and it's saying, hey, you know, here's my MAC address. I'm, you know, one, two, three, four, five can you please assign me an IP address? And then the router will, uh, using DHCP, will assign an IP address to uh, that specific device, that network card. And once this uh, relationship is established, well, if you disable your Wi-Fi and re-enable it uh, you know, a few seconds later, what, will, what you'll notice is your computer is assigned the same uh, IP address again. And that is done using something called a DHCP table and something called DHCP leases. That means that the router will store your MAC address and the IP address that it has assigned to it for X amount of time. And what that means from a privacy perspective is each time you log on to a, you know, a different network, well, that network remembers your device. And since the MAC address is the same for the whole span of that chip, meaning you know, this computer in 10 years will have the same MAC address, it means someone could potentially trace where you're going using that MAC address. So it would be quite amazing if we could change it you know, to something that's a lot more random. And the same applies to the computer name. So your computer name by default, let's just have a look here in the system preferences. If you go in sharing, you'll see that by default, your computer name is your first name apostrophe the kind of computer you're using. So in the case of Mac OS, it's like, you know, John's MacBook Pro. If this was a MacBook Air, it would be John's MacBook Air. So that's actually revealing a lot about who I am uh, if I use my real name. So, uh, and if you're using not your real name, if you're using an alias, well, that also doesn't change by default. It stays the same unless you change it, you know? So if you go to Starbucks and then to your job and then to, you know, your university, for instance, well, that means that you're leaving a set of breadcrumbs through your MAC address and your computer name all over the place, and that can be used to trace where you were. So it's really, really important to spoof your MAC address and your computer name on a regular basis. So um, the purpose of today's episode is I wanna teach you guys how to spoof your MAC address and your computer name uh, each time your computer starts. So if you go ahead and you shut down your computer and you reboot it, at that point, you're sure, well, sure, sure is a very, it's, it's a heavy word. I mean, the script will spoof your MAC address and your computer name for you each time you boot. Uh, okay, now one little disclaimer. If you're using a Mac 
that's equipped with a T2 chip and you're running Mojave, that will not work. You cannot spoof your MAC address on Mojave on hardware with a T2 chip. You need to upgrade to Catalina for that. If you're using a computer such as mine that's older, that does not have a T2 chip, no problem, you can spoof your MAC address you know, on whichever operating system you're using. If you want to learn more about that, you can go on my channel and look at my video on my on my episode. Geez, I have a hard time with that one. On my episode on uh, why T2 chip enabled computers are shitty for hackers. If you're into that kind of content, smash the subscribe button and let's move along. So uh, as you can see, we're on my website, sandnutson.com. Privacy guides that have a lot of command line stuff are uh, published there so you guys can follow along and you can copy paste stuff. So let's see here what we're doing. Uh, so this here, uh, in case you didn't know what MAC addresses even look like, well, that's what a MAC address looks like. It's a set of six blocks. It's uh, hex encoded. And uh, the first three chunks are assigned to manufacturers. So Apple, for instance, has a bunch of pre-allocated prefixes that are assigned to Apple hardware. That means that by looking at the first three chunks, you know if this is a Samsung uh, device, if it's an Apple device, etc. So when spoofing the MAC address, I decided to always use a first a, a prefix that actually is legitimately Apple. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so more on this in a second. So if we run this first command here in the terminal, and if you don't know where your terminal is, you can use spotlight and just type terminal, enter. That first command will show us what our MAC address is. And uh, this here is uh, the MAC address of my computer. Actually, ha ha ha. Jesus, 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 Jesus. This is my second time recording this video, so that's actually not my real MAC address. But you know what? That's actually kind of cool because I didn't want to show you my real MAC address. So we're, we'll, we'll imagine that that's actually my MAC address. Ooh, that's a little confusing. Okay, let's move along. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and, and create a folder. So we're going to be creating essentially a script that will run each time your computer boots. And that script is going to take care of all the magic. So it's going to spoof your MAC address and your computer name. Uh, so yeah, first things first, let's go ahead and create an sbin folder. So sudo means create or run the command with administrative privileges and the mkdir command means make directory. So and it's asking us for our password. Once this is done, uh, the sbin folder has been created. The second little command here, well again, do it using administrative privileges and change ownership of the sbin folder to who am I is a shorthand for your user and then the admin group. If you don't know anything about Unix, that may look very strange to you. You can look it up. Each of these commands, by the way, mkdir, chown, these commands, you should learn more about them because you'll be using them a whole lot more if you start digging into privacy and security. And if you're more of an expert, well, you can go ahead and just follow the guide on uh, sanutson.com. No need to listen to this whole episode because it might be a little redundant. Although you can just follow along if you see fit. Okay, uh, so running this here means the sbin folder is now owned by us. Uh, and we wanna go ahead and create this script. So that script is where all the magic happens. You should never ever run commands that you find on the internet unless you know what they do. A hacker could essentially destroy your computer with a single command. So uh, to help you guys uh, do due diligence on this, I went about explaining what each line does uh, one by one here. I think this is a great way for you guys to learn a bunch of commands and what they do. Uh, but for the purpose of making this video not too long, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this. You wanna make sure you copy from the very beginning all the way to the very end uh, and paste this here and then type enter. So what that did, it just created this file and it added the content, which is all of this here, to the file, okay? Um, now we can skip all of this because as I said, you can go over this if you want uh, later. And we need to take that uh, spoof.sh file and make it executable. And that's what the chmod 
uh, plus x command does. Now, uh, in order to make the spoofing of your computer name a bit more legitimate, uh, instead of using just a random string as your name, I said to myself, well, what could we do? And then I said, oh, wow, we could use a list of very popular names in the United States and take the first name from that. So that's what I did. I have a list here that comes from the US Social Security Administration Census and it's 2048 of the most popular names in the United States. The first 1024 are girl names and the next half are boy names. So as you can see, Logan, Lucas, Benjamin, Oliver, James, those are like super mainstream names. So giving a name like that to your computer will make it look very generic. Uh, okay, so this command here is essentially downloading that file to your file system into the SBIN folder. So those are all of the first names. And now we're gonna download a bunch of MAC address prefixes. As I mentioned earlier, MAC address prefixes are allocated to vendors, to manufacturers. So all of the ones that are here, I think I have 768 of them, those are all actual legitimate Apple uh, prefixes. So we're gonna download this here. And now we need to create a launch daemon. So launch daemons on macOS are scripts that are executed each time your computer boots. And that's great because it allows us to make sure that the script we just created, the spoof.sh script, will run each time your computer boots. So you need to do again, a copy paste and make sure you're selecting everything from cat to EOF. And once this is done, you're pretty much all set. Now, uh, instead of rebooting my computer to show you that everything's working, because that's a bit complicated in the process of creating this episode here, uh, we'll essentially simulate a boot. So what the boot does, uh, essentially, it runs this command. So if we go ahead and run the command, uh, first things first, okay, I'll show you a few things. Uh, so I wanna start by showing off what my uh, Mac address is. Whoa, sorry. So this here, if I run it, we can see that my Mac address right now is, uh, you know, 9CF4, blah, blah, blah. And we can see that my host name is John's MacBook Pro. If we go into system preferences, and we look at sharing, we'll see that, you know, the computer name is John MacBook Pro. Um, now, if we go ahead and run this command here, boom, uh, we can see that the, the host name was spoofed to uh, Gatlin's MacBook Pro, and my, now, my, my Mac address is now 2C20 blah, blah, blah. Uh, and if we go here back in system preferences, uh, and in sharing, we can see that my computer name was changed. So it's pretty amazing. Each time you boot your computer, you'll notice that your computer name has changed and your MAC address has been spoofed. That means that whenever you wanna go to a different location and you don't wanna be identifiable using these, uh, these uh, identifiers, well, you essentially just have to reboot your computer and you'll, be, uh, you'll have a fresh computer name and MAC address. Whew. And if you put that uh, in combination with the episode on Firefox, where we configured Firefox uh, to be a bit amnesic, essentially when you power off your computer or when you exit Firefox, quit like a real quit, not just close the window, when you quit Firefox, all of your cookies and data is flushed, so is your browsing history. So that makes it so if you go to a location and you wanna make sure that your on a clean canvas, well, you can just essentially reboot your computer and your Firefox environment is clean, your MAC address was spoofed, and your computer name was spoofed. Woo, so that was a lot. If you like this kind of content, smash the subscribe button. I have a lot more in store for you guys. Uh, I'll see you next time.